Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of The Rest of Everest. I think I can safely say that this show is, without a doubt, the most in-depth look into the entire experience of what it takes to climb Everest, as well as some other peaks throughout the Himalayas. But all of the events in the series are shown in chronological order. So if you're new to the show, please go all the way back to episode 000 and watch everything in order. That's truly the best way to enjoy it. Thanks. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 195, the Broad Peak Summit Push. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest. I'm John Miller. Joined this week, it's been a long absence since we recorded an episode, but uh, Brian Block is back on the line. How you doing, Brian? Hey, hey. Oh, good. Glad to be back. <laughs> it's been quite an adventure over the past few weeks, hasn't it, Brian? You live up in <laughs> Estes Park, and Estes Park... Uh, got hit by the massive Colorado floods. How's, how's everything up there? Well, it's been interesting to say the least, you know, but uh, as far as us personally, we got off pretty easily, but uh, town is definitely hurting a bit. And especially with this government closure, it's uh, keeping it more than interesting because the parks aren't available. So we're kind of almost landlocked up here. <laughs> yeah, literally landlocked. Well, only uh, one way in and out of town right now, correct? Yeah, yeah. With the park road closed, it's pretty much just Highway 7 and uh, they did just open up 119, but it's still what was a 45-minute drive down to Boulder is, you know, almost two hours, so. Oh, that's just crazy. Well, really uh, glad to hear you guys are all, all, all right up there. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a long recovery, but we're glad that you guys are okay. Um, yeah. But switching gears, let's go back to the rest of Everest. We left off just before releasing episode 195 here, which is the Summit Day episode of uh, Broad Peak. So I know people have been hanging, waiting to see just what transpired uh, back in 2010 on Broad Peak. So here we go. So we're on the way up to Camp 3. <coughs> Going for the summit push from 3. Carrying a full load. I get more excited about uh, not having to carry everything from 3 to 4 and then 4 up all the way back down. So I'm feeling better. The higher I go, the better I feel. As usual, and for no reason that makes any sense, that's for sure. K2's out in full effect today. Really low winds. Beautiful day. Two releases out, which is always a good sign, good weather. It's a beautiful view all around. So I had a, uh, the bug get me last night, or two nights ago. Supposed to go up to three the other day and then to four. <clears throat> Was not good. Cold sweats, nastiness. Pretty much called a uh, pretty upset to the wife. Thought it was over, but hydrated up like a mother last night and haven't eaten too much and I've been popping lots of emodium. Yeah, good for you. But uh, feeling pretty good. Moving pretty quick. Actually, just slow right now because everybody ahead of me is real slow. But it's okay. So making good time and it's just getting a little warmer as we go. Good things. All right, that's it for now. More from Camp 3, most likely. Yeah, how bad was it? it sounds like you really got hit badly. Yeah, my I, my wife calls me the guy with the iron gut. And, uh, <laughs> I, and, you know, part of it is, you know, I drink the water in Mexico for sport, you know, just because <laughs> it's like I'm trying to build up the immunity across the world because usually I have a day or two free. But this whole trip, I hadn't been sick at all until... You know, it was, uh, I got up to camp too and was like, oh yeah, no problem. Blitzed up there, felt great. And then got just immensely sick, you know, for better part of that day. And then ended up that I thought I kind of beat it down. I think I figured out I took 13 Imodium in 15 hours or something like that. It just was literally unstoppable. I mean, and I was vomitous as well. So all the fun stuff that goes along with expedition stuff and, uh, and, uh, yeah, the rough times. Uh, you should you should get married now. And I'm you. trying. Come on, mate. Just you're not no. trying. You're not trying hard enough. Mate. No woman will have me. Eh? <laughs> I like the arguing up here. So, is this Camp Three or Camp Four? This is High Maybe Camp Three. High Camp Three. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this expedition. Is, I have a hoping it's my future ex-wife that I've met. Your future ex-wife. So, uh, you just gonna start making the payments on the house you're gonna buy her? Oh, she has a house. <laughs> Even better. I have got a little house in Sakopane in Poland. <coughs> beautiful ski region. 
Yeah? Yeah. Looks like I'll be in Poland all winter. <laughs> so who's up there with you? I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna name my first five children. Mike, Kobe, Chris, and Brian. All right. <laughs> Yeah, this is only four. This is only four, though. <laughs> I was just gonna say, the fifth one you're giving away. Giving it up for adoption, I'll take it. This was kind of a uh, combined group. Her off at my parents' house. They love taking care of babies. Nice. In the far side is Chris Simic there, in the neighboring tent right there is Kobe, who so was with Mike Horn. This is our situation. Horn. Be Fabrizio and I here for a little yes. rest. A little hydration, a little food. It's the way to go, yeah? I think it's the way to go. We'll be warm, we'll be uncomfortable, we'll be cozy. Who knows, maybe somebody falls in love tonight with someone else. It's the way to do it, you know? Chris, they need more room. Come in here. We stack five, like logs. Uh, and we yeah, did actually sleep that. five in there. <laughs> I never see myself until I look in the camera. It's like, oh yeah, there I am. Is it a three-man tent? Hey, who's that? Yeah, guy? it's a three-man. Now we're packing four into this tent, and then uh, what's the game plan? We get up at two and, and go for it at three. We get get up or or two did we tell? Yeah. Did we tell everyone else that? And then we get up no, at three no, no, and go no, no, for no. it. <laughs> All that matters is us, Tamayo, Kobe, Mike. Yeah. Us. Okay. Life well, is good though. I feel good about this. Yeah, we're gonna be four guys all in the time. Yeah, you know. Big spin, little spin. It's been a while since I had some action, so. Yeah, since last night, huh? <laughs> I heard you guys giggling. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris, <coughs> do you have a pot over there? A pot on a pan? Yeah. 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 First idea. And a stove, too. You want two? <coughs> ah, these guys brought one up. They did? Because there's one okay. here. And then Mike and Joe from our team actually came up and joined us. Okay, yeah, perfect, huh? Sounds like a party. You say A a lot, eh? Yeah, eh? When he talks to you, he's Canadian. He no, talks to Kobe, he's like, he yeah, yeah. <laughs> he becomes Swiss. I want to be Canadian. <laughs> yeah. I really do. What elevation are you guys <laughs> at here, do you think? We are at about 24,000, <laughs> I believe. I learned, which was, it's a tickle. <laughs> I'm going to make my corny tonight between you and Kobe. This is gonna be writhing around. Whoa. Oh man. Oh, where are we? <laughs> no, it's not on TV. Hey, hey, Mike. You're talking. When I'm on the phone to my girlfriend, now you have to be quiet. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Kobe. Uh, she looks jealous. You know, Fabrizio? Yeah. That's what friends are for. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's quite a platform you guys have there. Andre? <laughs> yeah, it's actually dug out of a really uh, auspicious oh, is spot. Good? good? Yeah. Ready to go tomorrow early? You can hang on to that. Yeah, I don't think I can hang on <laughs> yeah. though, you know, I don't have yeah. enough money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the plan. If weather is good, yeah, we go. But I can, I can fix the rope for her. Yeah. I think it's I think good and we should have a big group, so. Could be very good. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much everyone on this mountain going up at this time, or was everybody that was strong enough that they could? Okay. We had a couple of weather windows, and people sick, and okay. So we were up as high as we could be. This is kind of like the advanced strong team, I would say. You're very photogenic there, Chris. You know, you always seem to look right for the shots. Really? Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Right. Need to shoot some with the uh, camera too. Yeah, she looks so. younger though. <laughs> Kobe was highly entertaining the entire time. <laughs> I'd never thought of that, but <laughs> yeah. So this was our group. Uh, we did pack four in there for sure, and I think at one point it was five for a while. Uh, but we sat end to end, you know, feet, I'm head, stoked. feet, head. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You guys are fun. I'm stoked. I, I get a good vibe about tomorrow if the weather is going to be as good as it's supposed to be. It's going to be a lot of fun being with you guys and going up and seeing what we can see. Are we going to take it slow? Slowly, slowly. Slowly. There you go. And then we're going to make it to the Gipfel. <laughs> because <coughs> Kobe, in his language, it's called Gipfel. Gipfel? Gipfel? Is we go to the Gipfel. Gipfel! <coughs> okay, Kobe. And for dich? I think we have a lot of work in the morning. Just that. But go up. 
Did he just say he was going to bite Bjorn Borg and drink some Ovaltine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said Bjorn Borg is a lousy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys were highly entertaining. That tomorrow is going to be very, very and German. Work. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Swiss actually. Swiss, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, but if he does, Mike's from South so Africa, but he lives in uh, that's Switzerland. Yeah. That's the world famous adventurer, Mike Horn, sailor, climber. <laughs> you know, kind of everything. He's got a pretty good gig. He was lost last time. Muda. Yeah. Last time, Taya. He's a lot of fun. He uh, stopped by my tent when we were first moving into Broad Peak Base Camp, and I had the big Thor four-person tent, and uh, he said, oh, you must be from America, and probably from Texas with a tent so big. <laughs> I love it. I'm trying to get my client for South Face Annapurna. Oh, yeah. So Fabrizio's doing business. Oh, yeah. Always he's, working. He's working on future oh, yeah. expeditions. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Having a great time. This is going to be fun. It's warm. It's nice. Food, water. Food, water. If we had any more down in here, <laughs> we'd be lost at the bottom of the tent. So you, you, you rep for all the, the companies. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is yeah, funny. It's like you'll be sitting there and you'll be like, "This is miserable. I can't feel my fingers." And then next thing you know, you're going, "So where should we go in October?" You know, it's like it's already the next plan while you're in the middle of one. What do you do? You're just a professional adventurer? Just a <laughs> Sail and climb. And... How do I get that jump? <laughs> oh, that's easy. Just do it. Yeah, okay. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Although he is you, sponsored uh, by uh, Rolex and Mercedes, <laughs> I believe. That helps. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. Uh, uh, that, that's a pro no, tip, no, everyone. No, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. No, get a big sponsor. Oh. <laughs> no more credit. No, when I left Basecamp, it was $300. That's no good. <coughs> what? It's amazing how you can't get a hold of sat phone customer service when it quits working in the field. I don't know because I can't hear with this ear. <laughs> Which is actually out. true, and I'm not sure why he has the phone oh, there. <laughs> you trying to call Stu again? This is crazy. Saraya actually works really well in Pakistan and Nepal. Yeah, it's it's the way to go. Oh yeah, the amount and the minutes are less expensive. Everything about it's pretty good. Huh. At least the, in my experience, the, the iridium works better the higher up you go. <laughs> that does seem to be the case. <laughs> what time are we waking up? Two. Two. Waking up at. Soll ich meinen Wecker stellen? Ich habe einen Alarm? Was ist Wecker stellen? I like watching this footage because it's always great to see how little you guys are talking about the task at hand. <laughs> well, this is where you actually get to sit out and catch up. We all know what we're there for. Exactly. We all know what the challenge is. We all know the dangers. Especially in this tent. This is a group of very experienced people that. Uh, you know, they got their A game. You're enjoying each other's company, and that's the cool part. That's, yeah, that's what's cool. Yeah. 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 Lots of, lots of professional uh, golfers. Yeah. Are you also, eh? <coughs> no, I just didn't watch. No. My watch. Steve I never. Rosberg, Rosberg, yes. One, uh, uh, what time? Two o'clock. Uh, because I, one of my sponsors is an investment company. Huh. And I had to, um, you know, um, Jubo, I was with him for seven years, yeah. and this this big, car, <laughs> uh, I designed that that big. Um, oh yeah. The mountain one. The altitude arc. Yeah. Really? I wore those forever. They, they had 151 specially made. <laughs> with uh, my own signature when I went to the North Pole. Oh cool. Yeah. <coughs> oh yeah, and he's a I polar a explorer too. I forgot. <laughs> one of my friends reps him, but uh, everything that I seem to try on fits me pretty well. And, oh, they're very good. Very yeah, good. great glasses. And this uh, is a family company. It is. Yeah. Small oh, cool. Family, small family company. Two o'clock. Two o'clock. He says it's the two o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Alta, alta one, alta one. Yeah. Let's see that one. That's a good one. That one. New alarm. 
Two o'clock. Do you know Noah? <laughs> Noah had an ark. Noah's uh, ark? Noah's ark, and he had two, he had two animals. Two of yeah. everything. He's, uh, <laughs> of all kinds. Expedition in Casa Boom 2. Yeah. That was Noah's. Coming and Noah's alarm track. clock. No good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth one also, eh? Uh, French one. The French one, <laughs> Summit. Summit? Summit. Yeah. French Expedition Summit. And really? for two days, everybody think they're dead, but then they come down to base camp. On G2? Yeah. Huh. Summit. Four days ago. Oh, yeah, they were just down the valley from us. Oh, I don't know Korean people. Oh. Just your French people. You're staying pretty well connected. How are you staying so well connected? Oh, please. <laughs> There's some women on the team. <laughs> no, because still. <coughs> just get <coughs> And I so do funny. know one one member over there. Yeah. Liz Holly's assistant. I shipped, oh yeah, yeah. I shipped all her stuff here. Yeah. <coughs> What's a good word? Morning! <laughs> it's 2.30 in the morning on the 17th of July, 2010. <clears throat> Coming straight out of Compton, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Represent. <laughs> Packed in here like pigs in a blanket, which was warm last night. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't typically Pretty think of July time. as being that cold. <laughs> Yeah, at 24,000 feet, it tends to be a bit brisk. Although it was uh, unusually warm, actually, at this point. My only challenge was I was stuck in the middle of the tent. So, you know, to put your boots on everything, you kind of swing your feet out and get all situated. But, of course, me and Mike were kind of duking it out to get out of the tent. And uh, I ended up I ended up getting the short end of the straw and having to go out the far side and then walk around both ends of the tent and everything, which uh, was totally fine. But... You know, I usually like to be in the front of the pack when we take off, but some of the other people had started at midnight and before. So, you know, I mean, uh, we started right at 3.30, I believe it was, uh, or I did. I think, uh, like, <laughs> actually, Kobe got out of the tent. Like, I think he had his boots on already. He slept in everything. He just, like, rolled over and <laughs> took off. Ready to go. He's, yeah, he was pretty good. I, I would climb with those guys again for sure. Actually, everybody in that whole scene's pretty solid people, and I would – rope up with again but yeah we got out the door and got headed up and there was a couple of people on oxygen and whatnot so we had to get them situated and uh and we were off well wow, that and is we, an awesome shot there yeah sunrise is always great in the mountains that's crazy that far peak the way it's it's the first to catch it so <laughs> look at that shadow <laughs> yeah it's awesome i mean i mean you know we're getting up there i think we're at this point we're probably closer to twenty five thousand feet But yeah, there was this was the tent at Camp Four yeah. that we passed by. There's Camp Three on that little platform. It's a beautiful view today. It's about six a.m. About a three thirty start. Hey two. And that's the summit coal. You catch that and then turn right and go up the ridge and you're at the summit at 8147. I'm like I'm going to be worked trying to make sure I've got enough energy to come down. Because it's pretty wide open and the snow's pretty hard. So wish me luck. Love you, V. And it was. It was uh, that night. It kind of had a flash freeze right before the morning. And so uh, the snow was really hard packed throughout most of the upper section. And it was... It was brisk and also I don't think I'd eaten anything in two and a half days. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we just we wasn't gonna chance. It. <laughs> yeah, I think I took three more emodium that morning and was that was pretty much breakfast. So pushed pretty hard and uh got some cool shots of everybody making their way and kicking in the trough. But, but yeah, you can see that's the, the call right up there, basically where you, you catch the ridge to the summit. So But then how long is the summit ridge? The summit ridge is uh it's a better part of a mile it's and it only goes up about 50 meters so you get to about 8,000 meters at the call you turn right and then it's uh like 300 three quarters of a mile and 50 meters of elevation gain it's a little up and down but of course we got all the way up to the very base of the call and this is where uh you know the warm temperatures kind of caught up with us because we got in a lot of snow and then everything was unstable
Yeah, get on it. Yeah, this is where you can tell you're on an 8,000 meter peak because it does look like you're looking out of an airplane window. <laughs> yeah, it does. And there's a the glacier way below, down where camp is, base camp. And of course, K2 just hanging out, taunting us. There's two Norwegian guys that uh, got up as high as we did, and and ah, we advised it was just <laughs> really, really bad <laughs> snow conditions. Fabrizio, Chris, and I all individually had like big whoop shifts, which is a sign of a, a heavy slab layer shifting down and about to release. So we were not uh, too keen on going any higher i mean it was the prudent and right decision yeah so let's talk about that this is decision time and the decision yeah. was what sure. we decided to call it right there i mean the snow was heating up and if we'd been two hours earlier we might have been through but we were concerned about uh, what it was going to do coming down as well i mean it doesn't matter if you get caught in an avalanche going up or coming down it's better off to kick it off and watch it ride below but you never know who's going to be below and who's going to set it off I mean, all the years of avalanche training I've had tells me that you don't know anything. <laughs> so we actually got way more uh, considerate of what was going on. And actually, you, know, you can see the tracks up over the part of that little cornice shrund area. But uh, we ended up uh, traversing below it, thinking because it was we could hear it crack and shift when we were on top of it. Not that we wanted to be below it necessarily, but didn't want to ride it down all the way. Either. We thought we could kind of skirt it in a little harder pack because that, that was in shade prior. But as Fabrizio lowered down, he found the first big crevasse as the snow got softer and softer. And wow. this is him crawling back out. Fortunately, we had put on a rope because none of us were roped. Uh, wow, so he basically was yeah, <laughs> leading out. And Chris sank in real quick. And I, you know, grabbed a hold and sank him in. And once they got situated, I shot some photos and tried to get a little video. All right. So just to be clear, yeah, you turned around. Um, how hard was that decision to make? I mean, you, you were obviously, you were just around the corner so to speak, yep. from uh, the Summit Ridge, and everyone decided to go down. Um, how hard of a decision was that to make? It was hard. I mean, there was, uh, I think, three people. Kobe and Mike both went for the Summit and made it. Uh, oh, they you know, did make it. Okay. Yeah, they were first out, and they were first up. And I think uh, there was there was only those two, I think, that actually made the Summit on this round. Uh, and a lot of people went, you know, not even as high as we did and turned around. And, uh, you know, part of it was... I mean, I know that, you know, Fabrizio and Chris are super strong and, and, you know, and Mike and Joe were strong too. But when you have clients in tow, you make the prudent decision. And, you know, I was not uh, of a mindset, especially after having been sick for basically two full days prior. You know, I would say I was feeling about 80%. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I think Ed Veasters was the one to say it. You know, it's like getting to the summits, like swimming to the middle of the ocean. I mean, you're only halfway there, so... I always keep that in mind when I'm going up and, uh, you know, as soon as I felt a couple of different whomps and the shift, shift of the slope and everything else, I knew we were already in a bad way. And, and I was just hoping we could get down unscathed. Yeah. And, um, all those whomps just must be, <laughs> they, they, those just must get you right in the gut when you hear those. Oh yeah. There's nothing worse than like, cause Chris and I had one when we started traversing down where he, he went, whoa. And then I heard it go, and you could watch like a crack line appear, you know, in the high part of the snow where you're like, oh, okay. And then whoa, directly underneath me. And I thought the two of us were going to go together and wipe out Fabrizio below us. And uh, <laughs> ended up we got lucky, you know, and that's what sometimes being lucky is the most important thing. But we got to uh, end up getting back down through here fairly safely. And this was the biggest thing. I mean, if we got caught in a slide here, you can see it's pretty exposed and basically would have washed us right off the side at camp three and, you know, sent us on a, six eight thousand foot free fall descent to base camp which uh, you know i like to get down quick but that's a little fast <laughs> yeah you, you'll you'll bypass the express elevator this time oh yeah <laughs> so so it was hard i mean we knew that there was potentially another weather window to go back up you know and once you get up high and you feel good you know spl sprinting up to camp three and then making another summit push i mean you could put something like that together in two three days maybe even faster but uh yeah for us it was a matter of Okay, things aren't great, you know, and you make different decisions when you're climbing for personal gain. Uh, but also, you know, like I talk about in some of the slideshows I do now, things have changed for me. And my first promise is that I'm coming back where before it might have been to push the envelope. But when you get kid and wife, you know, a couple of kids and a third one on the way in February, uh, you, you make that decision, you know, and you do it uh, in a positive way. 
Yeah, that gives you a little bit of, <laughs> yeah, priorities change, perspective is a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, so you guys, uh, you guys made it down, uh, and um, we've got some footage uh, next week of, of uh, <laughs> okay, Broad Peak didn't, uh, you, were, you weren't able to make the summit of Broad Peak, but that wasn't your only goal on this expedition. You also had a little mountain called K2 in mind. Yes. And uh, so we're going to transition over to K2 starting next week. And we're going to start uh, looking at just what went into that. Very different situation because Broad Peak got you acclimatized and um, got you all ready for K2. So it's a much, much different uh, experience getting on K2 after already being warmed up from Broad Peak. So. Yeah, this is this is the warm up peak. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's definitely yeah, this is gives you an opportunity to get a lot of elevation and acclimate well and and uh, you know basically make a blitz on K two because there is no part of that that is fun and safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, you'll you'll see on the next few episodes it's really weird because you guys just sort of uh, try to start and uh, you know there's not all of these uh, this long uh, wind up getting ready getting everything in place uh and and getting used to the altitude it just sort of starts um, yeah and then the weather keeps you pinned down for a while so um but anyway we'll start spoiler K- alert <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll start k2 uh next week and uh yeah glad uh glad that uh those wumps didn't uh, consume you guys <laughs> on broad me too. peak me too so, all right brian well thanks so much um really appreciate uh you getting back in the saddle here and um look forward to showing everyone the rest of this expedition there's a yeah. lot lot more to come so we will see <laughs> you guys next week bye bye the rest of Everest has been watched millions and millions of times all over the world since 2006 and it's all been free but it's not free for me if you're a fan then let me know you can like the rest of Everest on facebook write a review on itunes subscribe on youtube or even help me pay the bills with a financial donation it doesn't take much and quite literally your donations make this show possible they honestly pay for everything you can make a one-time donation or set up a monthly contribution through my website help me out and i'll give you a download of our film everest the other side as well as some other goodies thanks as always to our announcer marlon may from marlinmay.com and to wendy Wu for providing the show's theme song Find her on iTunes or at wendywoo.com. Thank you for watching the rest of Everest. For more information about the show and upcoming expeditions, be sure to visit therestofeverest.com.